In 2008, I spent an entire year trying to write a blog. This was my first attempt at diving into making money online, and I failed miserably. My blog was called China Business Traveler. It was china-business-traveler.com. I even had to use the British version of Traveler with two L's. Traveler with one L was already taken. <laughs> so bad. But hey, you gotta start somewhere. In this video, I'm gonna answer five questions about my failed attempt at blogging. Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name's Spencer Jan, and on this channel, I help and encourage entrepreneurs just like you. If that sounds good to you, click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and let's get right to today's video. Question number one, how much money did you make? Uh, none. I didn't make any money. And in that entire year that I spent blogging, uh, I probably was a, uh, a net loss. And so I spent, I think, about two or $300 to start the program, which was essentially a course. And I had set up Google AdSense, so I was making a little bit on the Google Ads, but when I mean a little bit, it was literally pennies. 25 cents would be a huge click. And all of those added up to no, no more than $100. I also had affiliate marketing plugged in, so I had sites like Travelocity and other travel sites, and hopefully people looking through my blog would then book a ticket. I remember I did make one sale on a travel ticket. That affiliate program required that you reached a $100 threshold to get paid out, and I think my commission was like $75. And so even though I made that money, I never got it paid out because I never hit the threshold to get paid out. All in all, I think I made less than $200 on that blog, but when you factor in the, the cost of the actual program itself, I definitely lost a little money. And a little money meaning maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars. That's a year's worth of work and nothing really to show for financially. The good part of that is that you can tell I didn't lose a lot of money. I lost maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars. But what I did kind of spend was my time. I spent an entire year writing that blog. And so where I didn't have money to lose, I did have time. And I spent that and I spent a lot of it. And, you know, in hindsight, I can say I, I lost that time. And the truth is, is when you're starting something, you're going to make a ton of mistakes up front. And those mistakes, if you've spent a lot of money up front, are going to be just more expensive. Why not learn quickly, but have those mistakes not be really costly? And I think that's probably a good rule of thumb is if you don't have any money, but have a lot of time, spend your time you learn just as much and you make the same mistakes as you would if you spent a lot of money. It's just they're less costly. All right, question number two, what aspects of blogging did you enjoy? The biggest part of blogging that I enjoyed wasn't necessarily the blogging, it was how it all worked. It was how the internet worked. It's how websites work and understanding that there's so much data collected that there's information about how many people are visiting your blog and how long do they stay on it and what pages do they read and from what pages do they jump to other pages and it's really interesting to kind of see all this data and blogging just exposed me to some of that and that's what i really enjoyed i enjoyed looking at the analytics i enjoyed the numbers of it and being able to make data-driven decisions. Question number three, what's one lesson you learned that helped you become a better entrepreneur in the future? The answer to that question for me that I learned through blogging was that slow and steady wins the race. That was just ingrained into the course that I was using to learn how to blog. They used a little mascot, it was a little turtle. They'd put all over every course just reminding you that slow and steady wins the race. All of us want real quick results, immediate results, and the truth is with whether it's a blog or whether it's any business that you're trying to start, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take much longer than you think. And so being in a mindset of slow and steady wins the race, being able to have that mindset of be patient, I think is so important. It's such a long road to create any business that has any sort of strong foundation. So that idea of slow and steady wins the race really helps you hone in on playing the long game and just avoiding and wasting time trying to take shortcuts. Don't build your business on a shaky foundation of shortcuts and hacks. Stay the course of building a strong, firm foundation on good principles for your business. Here's a great question. Question number four, why did you quit? The answer to that's pretty simple. I hated writing. I hated blogging. I just didn't enjoy 
having to write articles and articles after the first couple months of writing all the fun stuff, I was just left with having to write articles of things that I just didn't enjoy and having to come up with new topics and new ideas. And it was just a struggle. It was a struggle to stay motivated. And I realized if I did make money on my blog, I probably could have lasted a little bit longer, but not much longer because really money is, a, is, is not the greatest motivator when it comes to offsetting pain. It's a great goal to have and everybody's aspirationally wanting more money and that's fine. When it comes down to pain versus money, everybody has a threshold. And when you get to that point of, man, this just isn't fun and it's really painful and I dread doing it. Money really doesn't offset that. Passion really does have a place when it comes to figuring out what kind of business you wanna have. Do something you're passionate about. Starting with something that you're passionate about, being involved and working on something that you enjoy working helps you get through those hard days, helps you get through those days where you just don't feel like doing anything the lack of passion for the topic of my blog, it just wasn't enough to carry me through uh, a longer period of time. All right, the last and final question, question number five, what did you do after you quit your blog? Well, this is a fun one because it leads into my first actual e-commerce business. I took everything that I learned blogging and kind of shaved away the things that I didn't like and started to think about what is my passion? What is something that I'm interested in? And what is something that I'm good at, that I have a unique advantage over others at? And pivoted towards actual e-commerce where I sold a physical good. So I started an e-commerce direct to consumer mattress company. These were memory foam mattresses that were compressed, rolled, and put into a box. In 08, I was actually working on a project for somebody else, sourcing and manufacturing memory foam mattresses in China. And while that project sort of fell through, I did end up with a sample for myself that I ended up putting in my uh, apartment, and it was an amazing bed. It was super comfortable and I had shown friends of mine who also thought it was super comfortable, who also wanted me to get them a sample. And so these things kind of naturally clicked and I just had an opportunity and thought, hey, if a bunch of people want these, maybe I could sell them and maybe this could be my e-commerce store. I started a company called Slumber Max and I sold mattresses to expats living in Shanghai which was a super small niche, but I felt like that was a market that needed a product that I could provide. So if you wanna look into how I started this mattress company and sold over a million dollars worth of mattresses, click on this video right here and I'll tell you all about it. Well, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I had a ton of fun making it. Hopefully you got something out of it. I had fun sharing my failures and hopefully you can see that failures are actually the building blocks that you can use to build a great company. All right, I'll see you in the next video.